Hey guys, Colorado Camper Man Brian here. I am super excited to do today's video because I am going to be installing 200 watts of solar on our travel trailer. So for those of you who've been watching me for a while, you know that recently I ran over our Renogy 100 watt solar panel briefcase and ruined half of it. So we've been growing off of 50 watts of power uh, for a while now. And since then, I'm like, man, I need to upgrade our solar setup. And I had done a 200 watt system on my in-laws camper a while ago, and they absolutely love it. So I decided to buy this. It's, uh, it's an HQST solar uh, 200 watt solar panel kit that you can pick up on Amazon. At the time of this recording, it was about $220. That included two 100 watt panels, a 20 amp uh, charge controller, include all the wires, the brackets to mount everything, basically everything that you would need to do this. Uh, I did purchase two uh, inline fuses as well, um, but with those, this kit, and then shipping and taxes, everything, it was about $250. I'll put Amazon links in the description to where you can buy this if you want to check it out. But in this video, I'm first going to show you guys the tools you're going to need for this project. I'm going to show you guys my plan of attack and how I intend to install this, and then I'll actually show you guys how to do the installation. All right, so here's all the tools that you're going to need for this project. I did use my extended climb ladder, which is down here. And I'll put Amazon links to all this stuff, by the way, too. I use some wire cutters, some wire strippers, some Loctite, some thread locker. I use several different types of screwdrivers, a Phillips, a flathead, a square head. I use uh, the little stud buddy. I use this to find studs up on the roof. So, you know, just that or a stud finder, a tape measure, carpenter's pencil, a fishing line. So like an electrician's fishing line. You could also use like a coat hanger. Um, use my drill as well as my impact driver with a socket extension and then several sockets, uh, different size sockets. So um, I'd say if you just had a socket set, that would be super helpful. I use a 10 millimeter um, fixed wrench, electrical tape, wire nuts, uh, my 30 amp fuses I got for my uh, inline fuse that I installed. I, I used several different drill bits. So again, if you just had a, a uh, drill bit set, that would be really good. I always use headphones or ear protection. I was using my circular saw as well as my impact driver, both of which are super loud. I used a light because you are going to need to cut power to your um, camper. So you're going to need some light to help you while you're working on the inside. And then as I mentioned, I used my circular saw as well as a caulk gun and then some die core. Got some self-leveling. This was supposed to be white, but for whatever reason, I was sent black. Um, so whatever. And then I use a rag as well. All right, guys, so here is my plan of attack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna obviously put the solar panels up on the roof. I'm going to take the vent cover off the refrigerator cut a couple holes in that screen meshing, and then fish the solar panel wires down into my refrigerator so they're gonna come down here. I'm then going to drill a hole into uh, this floor right here, which then goes on the inside of our camper. So the wires will then pop out through there. I'm gonna have to be very careful because I do have that pipe. And then those wires will feed out to the solar panel, which I'm going to mount onto the piece of wood that goes here. I took that out already because I'm actually gonna to need to cut it in half. And then what I'm gonna do is put a piece of wood here. So this panel will be fixed, and then I can still take this one off because this is where our shutoff for our water heater is. And then I'm gonna have the charge controller hooked directly up to the DC end of our converter box. So some of you guys might be wondering why I'm putting my uh, charge control and everything down here. Honestly, I really don't have a, a good place to put this thing at all. Um, unfortunately, like our, our refrigerator is here. I had considered putting it on the side of the refrigerator, but then I'd have to take the fridge out. And after looking at that in pretty good detail, it seems like that's going to be way too big of a project. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna unhook our battery as well as unplug from shore power. 
All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our brackets on our solar panels and we're gonna use some Loctite to do that to make sure that these bolts don't come off. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, hey, Brian, you had really good luck with your Renogy solar panel briefcase. Why'd you go with HQST? Well, check this out. This bracket says Renogy. Word on the street is that Renogy and HQST are the same company, and I think this just confirms it. HQST products are less expensive than Renogy, and at the end of the day, it looks as if they are the same company, which Again, this just kind of confirms that. Anyways, we're gonna take our bolt and we put a washer on the one side, then we're gonna put a washer here as well. And then we got a little tiny lock washer and then our nut. We're gonna screw these down. And when we get to about there, we're gonna take our Loctite, or, which is thread locker. That will ensure that these are not gonna come off. I'm just gonna put this on the threads down here. Now I'm gonna ensure that when I tighten this down, these, the ends right here are flush up against the side of your panel. So now I will take my socket and my fixed wrench and tighten these babies down. Then I'm gonna go around and do this on all corners of this panel as well as my other panel. All right, so now that I have my brackets installed on the solar panels, I brought them up on the roof and I'm just laying them out where I think I would like to put them. I'm putting them in this area for a couple reasons. First off, I have the brackets on this side because I have a natural curve to my roof if I actually put the panel the other way. Um, it probably wouldn't really sit flush uh, since there's that curve. This way, I'm actually working with the curve so everything is laying flat um, i also have my my wires here so my little control box on the panel is here and then here that way these wires will meet where i will put the y connector which will then feed down into my uh, refrigerator vent um, i'm probably gonna have to move these around a little bit but i'm gonna use my little stud buddy which is like a stud finder and i'm gonna find where these studs are and i'm gonna ensure that the the front of the brackets, this first screw is on the studs because your wind is gonna be coming this way and it's you know gonna wanna get under here and potentially lift it up. So my thinking is if I make sure that the, the front screw is into a stud, that will ensure that it stays down the best. Um, unfortunately, with how these are spaced, um, they're not all four gonna be on a stud. So like I said, I'd rather make sure that my first screw is definitely on a stud. I am not going to uh, screw the solar panels in yet because just in case I have any complications, I want to be able to access the little panel thing that's on the other side of the solar panel. The other thing that I did was I looked at my opening down below and looked straight up to see where I could see there being a you know the straightest access and that's if I make a hole in this mesh right here. So one thing I am going to do is I am gonna hook up this Y bracket because this isn't gonna hurt anything if I have this hooked up. But this will ensure I get the right mount of cable down there. I don't wanna plug this in because otherwise there's, there's an open end right here and uh, that would not be good to have power running to these. So I'm gonna tape this like so, so I make sure I get the proper length. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of black electrical tape on the bottom here so that I know that this is the negative wire. All right, so now that my line is fished through, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole in my floor. I'm gonna to try to put it basically right in line with the wire. All right, so here is the board that normally goes here. 
And uh, here's my wires coming out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this board in half. I'm gonna put this board in the, uh, in the middle here. And so then I can screw each panel to it. So now what I'm gonna do is mount the solar panel. Now this board is extremely thin. It's maybe a quarter inch thick and it's very flimsy. So I'm not gonna screw just the charge controller to this uh, for fear of this wood breaking. So I'm gonna put a one by six on the back here and then I will mount the charge controller up here with having that one by six backing. I'm gonna drill a hole right here and right here. The one hole will be for the wires feeding in to the solar section of the charge controller. The other hole will be where the wires will go to the battery. So they'll come out and then they'll feed into the panel here. Okay, so here is my negative with the black uh, tape on there. So that ought to be good right there. But now I'm gonna take off my, um, the panel for my electrical box here. All right, so we're on our panel here and here is the positive and here is the negative. So you can see that we do have an open uh, port on the positive, 12 volt positive. And then for the negative up here, we'll probably just have to, um, we'll probably just have to put it on the bottom. We might be able to squeeze it up top with adding that other wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the panel actually off so I can have access to it and then I'll get my wires fed. All right, so one thing they totally forgot to do was install this uh, fuse. So this needs to go on both the positive of the solar panel as well as the battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna feed it up to the positive and then I'm gonna put a wire nut on this, which is gonna be behind here, and I'll electrical tape it. Um, so the fuse will be hanging out. Um, you know, I guess that might be unsightly for some people. For me, I'm not gonna really see it. And then two, fuse does go out. I don't have to pull a board off or anything like that. I can just pop it off and put in a new one. Okay, so now I'm feeding the positive wire through. I'm doing one cable at a time so that there is no confusion as to which one is positive and which one is negative. I'm gonna go ahead and re-hook up our battery and double check and make sure that we're getting voltage reading and everything. And if we're good there, then I'll jump up on the roof and get our solar panels plugged in. All right, there we go, folks. So 13.3 volts is the battery and then zero volts coming in and amps coming in from the solar panel. So let's Go plug those in. We are working, baby, yeah! So we're bringing in uh, two amps, um, but it says that our battery is at 14.2 volts right now, and our panel is bringing in 15.9 volts. 16 volts. All right, now it's time to uh, tidy this all back up. All right, here we go. That's what the finished product looks like. Not too bad. So here's what it looks like from above. You can kind of see those uh, fuses, but not bad. And you can barely even tell that there's a cut down those boards right there. All right, so now it's time to mount our solar panels to the roof. So again, I have labeled off uh, where the studs are. So I'm gonna make sure that the front screws are hitting the studs. So I'm gonna lift them up. I'm going to put a ton of die core in the area where the brackets are going to be. So I'm going to kind of trace them around here. So I know where they're at. I'm just going to unload some die core in that area and then drop it down and screw it.
So here is the final product with the two solar panels. You can see the wires feeding right into the vent. So they're very, very little is exposed, which is nice. I did fill the screw holes with Dicor. I wish I would have had white Dicor, but oh well, nobody's gonna see it up here. And if I ever want to add more, I have plenty of real estate. Got room back there and an insane amount of room up front here. And behind the refrigerator where the wires went in, I did put some Dicor around there to get that all sealed up. All right guys, well that does it for this how-to video. Overall, it's not too bad of an install. This is my third time doing this, so I have a little bit of experience. But in with video recording and everything, it probably took like four to five hours to do this. Uh, so not terrible, but uh, we are so looking forward to be able to have the rooftop solar and not have to worry about setting up our portable panel. There's pros and cons to both, but we really look forward just to uh, having it up there and not having to worry about setting it up or anything. So again, I'll put Amazon links to where you can find these solar panels and some tools that I use uh, in the description below. But if you guys enjoy the video, throw a like. And I do a lot of other DIY videos like this too. So I'll put a playlist of all the DIY projects I've done for the camper. But anyways, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.